So I'm finally doing another tier list video. We're doing damages today. Of course, later I'll do flanks, front lines, and supports. I thought I'd split them up this time because or else it's going to be way too long of a video and I uh, kind of want to prepare stuff a little bit differently this time. I've actually made some notes instead of just doing it on the fly. So I'm recording the gameplay here as I go through some of the kits and stuff and then I'll do it in post with the actual overlay for the tier list. We're also getting the patch notes for the next update the day after I'm recording this one. So it really won't make sense because I'm probably going to be doing PTS videos anyway, but it really shouldn't affect the rankings of anybody in this video because unless they massively improve a character or massively make them worse, uh, this is way more based off of my personal list than the meta. So it really shouldn't change too much. The character strength definitely does play into it, but it's way more my personal sort of tier list. And even if one of the characters I didn't like was super strong, I wouldn't rank them more than like a tier or two higher just because of that, if that makes any sense. So we'll start off with Betty going really high into B or maybe even low A. I really like the weapon, the right click, the Q is a bit weird. The F is also really fun. It does have some sort of skill to it as well if you're using it correctly. And then the ultimate I also don't love. So it's kind of like half and half, which is why she's going right around the middle. Talent wise, some of these have been good in the past. Fiery, I did like for a while. But our also used to be really slowed, but at the moment, they're not great. Again, some of this stuff might be different with the balance changes, but generally the idea of the character is going to be mostly the same for most of these characters. Even if they change a ton of stuff in future updates, Betty is still going to be pretty close to Betty's just general idea. Could totally see in the future if they change some stuff and make her way better. And a little bit closer to how she once was, she could go up into A, but yeah. That is where I'm leaving Betty for now. BK, on the other hand, should also going to be for the name and everything, but he is going down into like middle of C. Somewhere around there, definitely on the lower end of the tier list for me personally. Even though I can see him being an S for other people or a really high A, just the way he plays generally doesn't really mix with me. Sometimes with a Q combo, like the Q left click, right click, you just burst somebody, that can be really good fun. The ultimate is also fine. Definitely wouldn't say I dislike him, though I just couldn't say that I love him unless you get that combo specifically. So that's why he's going like a C plus or sometimes a B minus. But yeah, I don't really hate BK as you can see. He's level 34. He's actually one of the higher ones, but... I just don't really pick him up that much these days. Even though sometimes it does hit, BK for me is one of the less common characters that I find myself grabbing. So he's going into a C+, which feels weird, but I think it fits. Cassie is a really tough one for me to rank, though, because sometimes I feel she's like an A+, I'm kind of shredding with her having a really good time. And other times, when I'm really not doing that well, she's like a C. So I'm going to have to put her kind of in between the two, right in the middle of B, I think is where she's got to go, because, again, I really do like her kit generally. I think she fits Paladins super well, the combo, and the different sort of ways you can run her. I like it a lot. It's just that sometimes it doesn't work, so I'm going to have to put a like B+, plus, middle of B. Next up, Dredge. I feel like I could say a very similar thing as to what I just said there with Cassie. Sometimes I have a great time with him, specifically with Abyss Spike, which is why I'm putting him in A-. minus. It feels weird putting him over Cassie in my head, and even when I sat and thought about it, but he definitely does have to go into A-, minus because when I'm having a good time with Abyss Spike, he's one of my favorite characters. Uh, specifically, though, with this way of playing him. If he didn't have that sort of playstyle, he'd probably be in like a C. If you asked me to rank Hurl or Scuttle, it would be somewhere around a C, kind of close to BK. Again, he's got some sort of variety, but... Uh, it feels weird putting him above Cassie, considering what I just said. Sounds kind of similar, but I like Abyss Bike so much, he's going in uh, to A-, because I've just got a specific thing that I like with him, whereas with Cassie, it's a little bit more general, Cassie. so that's why she's just a tiny bit lower. They are very close, though. I don't love the right-click, though, or sometimes the ultimate. Just wanted to uh, also point that out. Next up, Joe goes, if you've been following the channel, you know he's going to go definitely on the lower end of the tier list, but he's not right at the bottom, surprisingly, after I actually sat and thought about it. Even though he is my least comfortable character, or one of my least comfortable characters, he's actually going into, like, a C because like I said in that video I do really like a direct sort of rush fuse a lot of burst drogos or infinite flight drogos those can both be really really good fun that's technically two out of three but that isn't really the way I feel like is ideal to play him feels like I'm trying to mold him into a different sort of character than the character I think he's designed to sort of be played as and again I've gone against really good combustible drogos that make him feel like an A tier character but for me even though I like the ways you can kind of make him work, it still feels a little bit iffy. So he's going into like a C. I wish I could put him higher. What I'm trying to say is even though he's been put into C, he's kind of floating around a B a little bit for me and I can see him moving up in the future. I do really like a lot of parts of his kit, like I said, the ultimate and uh, some of the other combos and just generally what he is as a character is really cool and I'm glad he's in the game. But she's not really for me at the moment. Next up, Amani. She's going into the lower B pretty comfortably. Again, I do really like the sort of part that she represents for Paladins, the uniqueness she has with the sort of stance switching fire and ice. I like that. Turn the ultimate. I don't love, and again, maybe with some change in the future, she could be in like an A, but right now, because of the way she's at the moment, she's going pretty comfortably into the lower end of B, and I could totally see it in the future being a little bit different, super unique, and that gets a lot of points for me, even if she isn't the most strong meta-wise and the more trial stuff. In casuals, she is kind of perfect chaos and very good fun. Again, tons of videos on the channel will be playing a money like that. Next up, Kinesa. She's going straight into D. She's probably going to be the only character in uh, D, I would imagine, unless I change my mind on something, because she's just never really been my type of champion. I can totally see her being a really higher, you know, position in the tier list for other people, just for me, it's never really wet. I don't really like snipers that much. In Paladins specifically, I feel like they just don't really go together, for me at least, even though uh, Strix later on is going to be in a much higher position than Kinesa. The weird thing is, I wouldn't even say that I dislike her. She just is a character that I don't like as much as the others, so she's going right at the bottom, because if I had to put somebody in D, it's probably going to end up being Kinesa. Next up, Leanne. She's going into A. If you ask me to put in a position on the enemy team, it'd probably be more like around a C, because I really don't enjoy going against Leanne. Sometimes the model, specifically on some characters, is horrible to try and hit, but 
When I'm playing her, I put her somewhere around an A, middle of A. I do very much enjoy the sort of character that she represents in Paladins. The reset is really good fun. The cheese, even though it is, again, kind of horrible to go against, is really good fun. Burst, combos, and a reset. I feel like if you removed the reset cards from her kit, she'd be in a very different position. She has a decent amount of variety in the character that she's trying to be with the auto aim, eminence, and precision. I talked about it quite a bit in the other the end video, but yeah, I think she does it really, really well. She's going into an A, but I could see in the future, maybe even being a low S or uh, even going down to maybe even as far as a C, depending on if they change a massive amount in the future, because some characters I think are more susceptible to balance stuff than others, and the end sometimes really sways. Next up, Octavia, she's also going in kind of a low position, a little bit above Kinesi, she's going in like the bottom of C, but she also has a bit of an asterisk because she is getting changed in the future. We know some of the stuff already from the preview they put out, but depending on balance stuff, some of the things that they could do with her, I think could put her up into like a B, maybe even an A, but right now, the way she's been for a while, when I'm recording the video, right before the PTS notes and everything, she's going into C. Some of the things I've thought about, if they really push her more in the sort of team leader, team captain direction, it could be really good fun. And also, if she jumps around a ton and bursts you in the sky with some of the things they've already teased a little bit, that could be great. Again, that stuff might be sort of out and we might know what's happening in the next episode by the time this video gets posted, but I never really liked the distortion field. The weapon is fine, but nothing too crazy. Build-wise, it's always been a little bit lame. They're not bad, but... There's just nothing really that interesting here. Uh, yeah, it's a bit of a negative because some of the characters have some really cool stuff that are kind of similar to Octavian. Uh, yeah, I do like her. She has the capability to definitely go high, but right now she's going to end up on the lower end of it, even though Octavia. I don't dislike her either. I actually say I like Octavia a decent amount. I pick her up every now and again, just a little bit more plain. Next up, Omen. I thought originally I was going to put him in like a C, but he's ended up in like a low A. I do really like the weapon. Overall, his kit is quite cohesive. He feels just like Damage Genos. I never really thought about it until this video, but his ultimate is just a vertical Genos ultimate. But there are some parts I don't love, like the F is a little bit weird. The right click is a little bit weird. The grab is good fun. A build wise and time wise, he's definitely got some potential there. That they could do some cool stuff. And generally, despite that, even though he is a little bit one note, he is pretty good, consistent fun to play. It's not really too many times I picked up Omen and had a bad time. So I'm going to put him in a low A, high B, somewhere around there. Next up, Sati. She's going. Uh, into high A, maybe even S. I'm not 100% sure, but I like Sati a hell of a lot. Sometimes she's definitely been in S, but at the moment she could definitely be a little bit better, so I'm not sure. She is in A plus, S minus at the moment, solely for the window opportunity flip build, which grew on me a ton. I didn't really like this originally for whatever reason, but the coin is still kind of fine. It's very different than what it once was, and uh, the improvised setup doesn't really exist playing around like the decoys and stuff. Build wise, she could do with some more variety, but she does kind of have two setups, and I like Sati a hell of a lot. If they brought back the other two, kind of as they once were and she had all three play styles that were all really, really strong she would easily be in like an s plus super high up there but right now because she's kind of got like one and a half out of three she's gonna be in like a plus s minus next up Shaolin had a really hard time deciding where to put him sometimes i feel like he should go in a c sometimes i feel like he should go in like an a minus he has the potential to be an s for me because he kind of has been before he's definitely solid enough to be somewhere around a b but there have been times in the past where he's been in an a which makes me want to put him in a c if that makes sense because sand trap i kind of miss what it used to be it's definitely still fine Desert Science has never really done it for me personally, but uh, yeah, there are a few setups he's had in the past that I've actually enjoyed more than maybe where he is at the moment, even though this one is definitely still really, really decent for me. He definitely lost some of his identity with the envious changes and stuff his F and his ultimate just feel kind of weird at the moment. Rapid Shot has never been that crazy, but with the combos, it can be kind of good. And it's basically just a left click, right click carrying his entire kit and uh, some of his cards. So he's ending up in a B-ish, but I wish I could put him higher. Next up though, even though I put Kinesa in D right at the bottom of the tier list, he's ending up in somewhere around a C plus B, uh, mainly because you don't have to play him like a sniper. Even though that's the way people do generally play him, it doesn't really work for me. I tend to glide around, play a lot more aggressively with the rifle, a little bit faster. Again, I've got videos on the channel running it. Definitely has been changed a bit recently, though. I'm not really sure where he's going to end up. I'd have probably put him a little bit higher than that previously. I much prefer his sort of identity in the game as like an invis sniper that can be played more aggressively with like the flare and the ult and stuff. Some of the changes good, some of them bad, but he's ending up lower end of B, even if I do like him quite a bit more than Kinesa. The gap isn't that crazy. Snipers just typically don't really do it for me, but it does depend quite a bit on my mood. Next up, Tiberius, even though I barely see him, he's going pretty safely into an A position. Previously, I'd have probably put him around a B or even a C actually, but with the quality of life changes he's had in the past couple updates, he's in a pretty damn good spot. And I just don't really think people have caught onto it because I like the Q, I like the right click, I like the base hit. The F is good, the ultimate's good. I used to have quite a few complaints about him. A lot of those have been ironed out and he's pretty just consistently hitting the thing that he's trying to do really, really well, I think. You've got a decent amount of variety, even though it is mostly focused on sustain. He does that kind of role with the weapons. And yeah, the thing he's doing, I like. I find it enjoyable. Not an ST of it. Definitely in an A, which might surprise some people because I don't really talk about Tiberius that much. Four characters left, though, and you may have noticed the S tier is empty. Tyra is going to be the first one taking that spot. This was completely by accident, but the end of the tier list here is ending pretty damn strong. She is taking that spot really, really easily. For me, I've liked Tyra for a really long time. 
Uh, she's been pretty much the same the entire duration, other than maybe the hunting party setup getting removed, which made me want to put her into A, but a Mercer Gill super solid. Burn Monster also got kind of changed, but I do still think it does its job, sort of. And overall, I really like the kit. I do kind of wish they'd bring back some form of the hunting party setup as being an actual thing that you'd want to run, because comparatively, I think it's still a little bit weird. It definitely isn't terrible, but a way, way off what it used to be. And for the builds, at least she's got a little bit of variety. Definitely could be better. And again, some of the stuff could be changed in a better way for Tyra uh, to have more options, but... What she's doing, I think she does very, very well. She's going into S tier. Then we've got Victor, B or a C plus. I mean, what did you really expect? I don't really know what I could say about Victor uh, in a tier list video that you don't know already. He does what he's trying to do, his character, pretty much perfectly. So he's going to end up in a B. I could also see you maybe putting him in an S for that reason, but he doesn't really have like a massively unique thing, but that's kind of the whole point. So you could put him in an S, you could put him in a B or like a C plus, depending on if you categorize that as like a good thing, a bad thing, or you're not really that bothered. I'm going to put him in a B. I think that makes sense, but maybe a C plus right at the top of it. It's Victor. I like him. I don't love him. I don't hate him. He's just somewhere around the middle. I don't really have too much to say. I wish he had more build variety because this has been the same for a while and there's some really cool stuff they could do with him and they've tried to sort of do with some of their car changes before, but he's always ended up kind of being something like this at least for as long as I can remember. And like I said, finishing the video strong, we've got Vivian. She's also going into S tier right next to Tyra for very similar reasons. I really like her kit, probably even more than Tyra, but I feel like they're kind of even S tier and just generally the tiers are a little bit ordered, but not uh, massively. S tier is kind of hard for me to order, but I like the weapon. I like the shield. I like the mine. She does the role pretty much perfectly of a damage sort of a duelist kind of thing. The ultimate, I also think is one of my favorite ultimates in the game, even though it's a little bit boring. Build-wise, a decent amount of variety. You can play into the shield, you can play into the mine, you can play into the ammo. I wish I had a little bit more stuff here, but I don't really know what they could actually do, so I feel like they're kind of perfect because I don't really have any ideas on how they could improve this. There's quite a few different good versions you can make, though, which is kind of my point. And overall, yeah, Vivian, I think, definitely deserves the STF for how consistently solid she's been for me, I think. And skins, I haven't really talked about at all in this video. They do play into it a tiny bit, maybe, but not really something I'm actually factoring in when I'm putting the characters in the tier list. The melee is a kind of little key part I do think about in the back of my head but mainly it's just directly how I feel about the character. Then finally, to finish off the video, as I'm sure you guessed, Willow is going into S tier. Previously, if you watched the channel, she would have been somewhere around an A plus or a B just because of the dead zone, but also some other parts of her kit that were really, really enjoyable for me. And I found to also be really, really strong. But after they gave her the ability to glide and fly around and stuff, it easily put her in to S. She does have a decent amount of variety in the build, even though there are definitely, again, some setups that are stronger than others. A damage reduction, reset and health definitely being the main one. The Q, I used to like a ton way more than I do these days for whatever reason, but the dead zone of weapon, flutter and ultimate, pretty much a perfect kit. If you were to ask me for an example of a character, I think does the damage roll nearly perfectly, just like with Vivian, uh, Willow would also be a fantastic example. Blast Flower, fantastic talent. Nightshade is also surprisingly solid. Scorn 2, it's just all more damage. So with that, I can end off the video. I'll do the other classes sometime soon. And depending on what's in uh, the update, I will do like a little add-on to the flank class where I talk about any changes here that might have like re-ranked the characters or something because I don't know what's in that update just yet. I'll put them in the description though, so if they're up, you can check them out. Let me know your thoughts though. I'd love to hear them and your personal tips, of course, down in the comments. My voice is completely shredded, so that is, of course, where I'm going to cut it. Thank you so much for watching. If you stay all the way to the end, I really do appreciate it. I've been recording here for like an hour and a half. See you guys all, of course, very, very soon. Let me know what you want to see me next as well. And as always, stay frosty.